world? Uh, my name is Terry Johnson. I'm a lecturer here at UC Berkeley, and this is the first time I've been serving as an uh, instructor for the iGEM. Oh. Um, what is your interest in synthetic biology, or how did you come about becoming interested in synthetic biology? Completely forgot. Should I be looking here, or should I be looking there? Uh, either one. Um, she is kind of next to me, so it looks like you are looking here. Okay. So. <laughs> Sorry, could you say again? <laughs> so, um, I'm curious about what you're... interested in synthetic biology and your kind of trajectory of, of studying, like what did you study to come to synthetic biology? So um, my background, is, my master's degree is in chemical engineering um, and it was fairly unrelated to synthetic biology, but um, we worked with signaling pathways. Um, so the mathematics that has been developed to look at those signaling pathways um, is also useful in many ways in synthetic biology. It's um, still evolving because a lot of the, the raw numbers that you need to um, sort of predict behavior very well are not available yet, but um, to understand whether it's possible for a system to act in a particular way or not in a particular way or under what circumstances a system could act in a particular way, uh, that sort of mathematics can be used. Um, and basically this is an opportunity for me to learn a lot of work with bacteria that I haven't done for about 10 years. Will you describe in a few sentences or in a sound bite, what is synthetic biology? Uh, synthetic biology is, let me think about that for a second. So evolution has produced a lot of solutions to a lot of different problems. Um, you have proteins which are effectively little nanomachines. You know, some are structural, they build up cells, some perform tasks, some communicate with other proteins. Uh, but they are, they're all task oriented, they all do certain things. Um, but the protein that um, one bacteria makes is gonna be different from a protein that another bacteria makes. It's gonna be different from the proteins that we make. Um, and they're all different solutions. And in many cases, you would want to be able to use a solution um, that uh, came up from one bacteria in another bacteria. Or you would want to take several solutions and put them together in a new way that has never actually happened before. Um, and some of that is medical, where if you have uh, a protein that um, is therapeutic in human beings, but difficult to get a hold of because you would have to get it out of human beings. Uh, it would be great if you could convince bacteria to make something like that. Um, and that's probably a really long answer. Oh, you did it. <laughs> so would you... I mean, I've heard the, the term tossed around that this sounds like directed evolution? Is that... um, directed evolution is a little more specific. With directed evolution, there's sort of two versions of directed evolution. One is you set up the environment to reward mutations that do what you want to do um, and punish mutations that don't do what you want to do. And then you basically allow the, the bugs to um, to grow up and event, you know, occasionally a mutation will appear and if it's beneficial and you've set up your experiment right, you'll be able to pick those ones out. Um, the more sort of standard laboratory version is when you take, um, say, a particular enzyme or a particular protein that performs a particular task and you want to improve it, um, is that you deliberately induce mutations. Mutations might not be the best word. You induce errors. Um, and you make up a big library of errors. 
and you put all of those error-ridden, um, uh, uh, mutation-laden versions of the enzyme into bugs, and then you have a test, and the test is basically, do any of them do the job better than others? And then you can take those and you can do various rounds to sort of um, take an existing protein uh, and, and improve upon it um, by directing the evolution. Evolution normally happens, a random error occurs, and then um, the environment basically says, if it's good for surviving in this environment, you win, you go on to the next round. If it's bad, you die. Um, in directed evolution, you're basically saying, I will pick out the ones that do the ones that I want. So I'm sort of directing, I am the environment. If you please me, then you win. So. You would say that's not specifically related to synthetic biology. I mean, certainly, um, how do you think that compares, that sort of directed evolution experimentation versus what the students in the iGEM team are doing with their um, creation of? Um, let me think about. Uh... Because would you say they're they're similar goals? Because you're trying to get you're trying to get a a bacteria to to morph to, into a certain pro producing certain proteins to do something that you would you would want them to do. Um, no, because I think that really what's happening is that the the process of evolution is um, that there's some sort of random change that is then selected for. And there's really no selection process, um, I mean, with the possible ex exception uh, that if something just plain doesn't work, you, you don't continue along those lines. But it's mostly um, taking separate parts that exist, and there's no element of, of um, you know, sort of introducing random changes into them and finding out which random changes are good. You're actually taking um, existing genes that you know what they do and you usually know about how well they do it and you're combining them in novel ways. Um, so for example, uh, the approaches can work together. If you have um, directed evolution, let's say you have, um, you would like to design a a system of parts, a collection of parts that will perform together, perform a complex task. And um, uh, that's a combination of genes A, B, C, and D. Um, a, B, and C work great. D does what you want it to do, but not very well. You might want to improve D with directed evolution, but then once you have a, a D that you're happy with, you would insert it using this kind of techniques that the iGEM team are using to um, uh, make the complete machine. So, okay. Um, I guess I'm trying to What is iGEM like, and what is your experience with iGEM? Because I, basically, I want to get an explanation of the sort of research the iGEMers do, and your explanation of it. Okay. Um, I think iGEM has. Let me think of this for a second. There's a couple of different aspects of iGEM, and they all come together. One thing is to develop and improve upon